What's up everybody? It's Austin Lee and I'm back with you with Fraud Fight today. Today I'm going to walk you through my journey into the fraud space, how I kind of leveled up my career and what I would recommend to other folks getting into fraud and kind of thinking about their future in the fraud space and how they want to align their skills and capabilities to make the most out of their successful fraud career. So I wanna say that there isn't a track or an educational degree that you can go and get and study fraud. There are certifications, great, but there's not a undergraduate degree that you can go into to study fraud. What I did, I was a business economics and public policy major in undergrad and then went for my information system. So I learned a lot about analytics. Having that technical knowledge, I would highly recommend, you know, understanding Excel, understanding SQL. So that way, when you're going into this role, into this fraud role, you're, you're really going on two different tracks. So one is that you can get very, very technical. So in the fraud prevention space, you can go from like call center to investigator, to analyst, to fraud strategy, to then to data scientists. So you just get more and more technical and that pay raise goes up over time as you get more technical. The second thing that I'd recommend, and if you're not somebody that's like, hey, I don't wanna be technical, I'm more of a people person, that's great. And that's fine too. So you can become like a, a manager or a director. So you're either getting more and more technical or you're improving your leadership skills and your operational skills. So keep in mind as you're going through your fraud journey, I just want to leave that little nugget there as we start this video. So for me, it was more of that technical side. So going into consulting, I got to work on one particular AML project. And in AML, I got to see how case management systems worked and how those processes were done. And the whole, the whole reason why I was a consultant coming on to this particular project was to help operationalize it, improve this process even more. So that's exactly what I did. And then having that knowledge, while it's not the same, it's not one for one, AML is not fraud, but it does, if you're gonna cast a wide net, you're probably gonna get a little bit of both. So by having that experience of case management, having my technical knowledge, I got to come in as like a fraud analyst slash fraud investigator um, going for, for cyber fraud. And so working at a bank, I got to know what to look for when I'm doing a fraud investigation. While the technical skills really helped, where I really grew as a person was what to look for in a fraud case. So this covered everything from synthetic identity to account takeover, to chargeback fraud, to skimming fraud, and got to learn what types of data that you're typically gonna look at, how to look at that data, and what's gonna indicate what's fraud versus what's not. So for uh, more of like a, an easy hypothetical example, if you're looking for um, cards that were impacted by skimming, you're oftentimes going to have all these cards that have already been called in for fraud, and they're all going to share these same transactions at this one gas station. So then you can most likely assume for a lot of these other transactions during that same time period, you can find out that these are most likely going to go bad. So you can put rules against it to charges actually happening for fraud. So again, I, I was a fraud investigator slash analyst. And then I moved more onto the portfolio monitoring and kind of fraud strategy, I would say. So this is creating those strategies for fraud prevention and also monitoring the whole portfolio to look for anomalies to see if there's any indicators of those uh, particular areas of the business that are, are going bad. So this, I learned a little bit more of Python and SAS, got even more technical. Well, I did have some of that knowledge from my, my education. This is where I really did a deep dive into those areas. So then again, having that technical knowledge, I was able to go into fraud data science. So this is, we're creating models. We're not just creating different strategies and strategies you can kind of think about as like an if then function. If the card has this code and they transact for over $500, decline the transaction. 
um, where for all data science, you're creating models that are basically correcting all, all those different indicators to predict if something's fraud or not. So you're gonna have hundreds, maybe thousands of different indicators that you can look at. It's really hard for just a, a fraud strategist to manually go through that, but having a model go through the data, understand the data, and then be able to indicate what's, whether something's fraud or not. So that was essentially my journey into fraud from investigator to analyst to strategist to fraud data scientist. And yeah, that's my journey into the fraud space. Just wanted to share it with you folks. So love to hear your journey. Feel free to comment in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time for FraudFi.